it's the individual has to want it. And, and I've talked to many members in our gym um, about the fact, you know, hey, what are you doing here? What are you? And I'm like, there's really no secret. It's not about the supplements I take. It's not about, you know, the sleep. The food. It's about everything that I do. It's a lifestyle. But when it's all said and done, you have to be consistent. Yeah. You have to decide yourself, not for somebody else. You have to decide yourself that I am ready to change my life. And am I committed to this, mm -hmm. right? Commitment is a huge thing. So I would say it, it's about consistency and committing to your goal. This is the Tom Rowland Podcast. Fascinating stories to amaze, encourage, and inspire you in fishing, fitness, and the outdoors. And we're brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee. Hey everybody, we got a great show for you today. There is a man in Seattle, Washington named Kevin Kester. Kevin is our guest today, and I chose him as a guest because he is three-time Masters CrossFit Games champion. That is a very, very, very hard thing to do. This guy is a physical beast, and he also has a lot of other things that are very common with the audience of this podcast. He is an outdoorsman. He wants to continue to do those things with his family outdoors for the rest of his life. Sounds a lot like Physical Friday to me. And Kevin actually embodies all of the things that we try to convey on Physical Friday. So whether you are someone who is looking at your 40th or 50th birthday and thinking, man, I need to make a serious change in my life, Kevin has some advice for you. If you are someone who is a competitive athlete, whether that is CrossFit or other sports, Kevin has some mindset things that we're gonna go over that will be applicable to you. And if you are just like me and thinking you might have a shot at the CrossFit Games, I talked to Kevin about what it takes to get there, what his mindset is, and where that comes from. So this is a great conversation with Kevin Kester. I think you're really going to enjoy it, and uh, here we go. I'm Kevin Kester, uh, three times CrossFit Games Masters Champion, and this is the Tom Rowland Podcast. Kevin, how are you doing today? Fantastic. Man, where are you? Uh, Seattle, Washington, and it's a beautiful day. Is it? No rain? It, no, it's uh, it's going to be 80 and sunshine today. So believe it or nice. not, it's uh, one of the most beautiful places in the world when we get sunshine i like to say it's like uh it's like being married to a beautiful woman that's sick all the time <laughs> that's a that's quite a that's quite a description i've never heard that before but uh i went to yeah. seattle i have visited seattle one time and uh i was a trout guide in wyoming idaho and montana and then we you know when i finished that season we went to uh visit some friends in Seattle, actually on Bainbridge Island there. And uh, all summer I was looking forward to it. I was like, man, it's going to be raining the whole time. It's going to be kind of cool. I was really ready to embrace that. And when we went there, it was sunny the whole time we were there. And th our, our hosts were like, you you have no idea how rare this is. It's it's really, uh, you just hit the nicest weather ever. But I came from the Rockies and it was, the, it was like that all summer. So I was like, huh. I was almost a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to experience like the real uh, what it's like most of the time, but it is a cool place. I really, I really like it there. And, um, in, in, uh, in your area, uh, tell me about your business that you, that you have. So my business is a steel erection company or we're a steel contractor. Uh, and we do work here in, in the state of Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Hawaii. And then we venture east towards uh, Montana, Wyoming, a little bit in the Dakotas. Um, we just got licensed in Utah. So we're, we're headed that way. But basically the Northwest, um, predominantly, you know, offices here in Seattle, uh, Spokane, Washington and Billings, Montana. That's um, awesome. And uh, how long have you how long have you had that business? Um, I started in 1996. The same year I had my daughter, so that was a rough year. It was an amazing <laughs> year, but a rough year. <laughs> and how many children do you have? I have two. 
Okay. My daughter, uh, Lex, is, is 26, and her fiancé is deployed in the country of Georgia right now. Um, and he gets back in September, and they're getting married in October. So we got an addition to the family, which I'm stoked about. He's a, yeah. he's a great, great kid. Um, and my son, Dom, is, or Dominic, we, he goes by Dom. He is uh, just turned 21. Okay. So... Yeah. yeah, we're we're close there. Uh, certainly close in age. How old are you? I'm 56. Okay, yeah, 56. 57 in September. So I turned 55 in in August. Um, I have three kids, uh, two boys that live in Bozeman, Montana, and uh, my daughter is the youngest one, and she's at Auburn right now. But uh, we're we're also uh, having a an addition to our family this coming weekend, actually. So my son, my oldest son, is getting married. And uh, just like you, to a to a exceptional person, and we're we're really um, looking forward to having her join our family, and it's it's a it's a good time, very busy, but but a good time. Yeah, well, congratulations. Yeah, and then you know next will be grandkids, which I'm really stoked for. Uh, yeah, I, I I was a busy man when my kids, you know, were young. Always made them the number one priority, along with my wife. But uh, I'm looking forward to maybe mentally being a little bit more present when I have grandkids, you know, yeah. instead of uh, thinking about everything I had to do. So I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm not pushing it, but you know, <laughs> I am looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I noticed in your story, just, uh, I mean, we, we don't know each other. We, we're just meeting one another today for the first time, but I've certainly been following you. I started, uh, you came across my feed on Instagram, uh, just following the different CrossFit athletes that, that I know are competing. And of course you, you won the division that I'm hoping to compete in one day. So I took a, took a little closer look and I see family, I see fishing, I see elk hunting, I see fly fishing out West. I see Montana. I see all these things. I'm like, man, I think, uh, I think we might be best friends, like in stepbrothers. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just become best friends? Um, and then you happen to be the three time CrossFit games champion. And uh, so I really wanted to have you on just uh, selfishly to try to learn a little bit about how I could take it to the next level and and compete at the same level that that you are. But um, you you also have this business that you just mentioned and you have 300 plus employees. And so I'm really fascinated how you how you're balancing this family, the 300 employees that you have in this obviously growing business and also training at the highest level to compete at, I mean, really in the master's level of CrossFit, it's even a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit more competitive than some of the other divisions because you're really only taking like 10 or 15 people to the games out of the entire world. And even in the elite division or the team division, there's, there's, more people of course there's more people competing but there's you know you know what i'm saying it's like it's really the best of the very best and so in order to do that you obviously need to be training at a intensity and a volume that is i mean unheard of for most people so how do you how are you uh, able to to balance all of those things and probably others. I mean, you, you, you're an avid elk hunter. Everybody knows how much time that that's taking to uh, make sure that you're dialed in and your archery and everything else. Plus you like to fish. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things going on with you. How, uh, how, how do you do all that? Uh, good time management, you know, uh, unfortunately I don't have the opportunity to be very spontaneous anymore. Right. And my mm -hmm. schedule is, um, booked in half hour increments every day. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm up early. Uh, I do get my sleep. That's the number one recovery tool. Right? How, so, how, much, how, how much sleep do you prioritize? Like, do you have eight, a bedtime that you hit? You get eight yeah, hours no matter I'm, what? Yeah, I'm like lately, it's been kind of at nine to five. You know, I'm getting to bed by nine, getting up at five or 10 to six, you know, is kind of my normal routine somewhere in there. I try to mm -hmm. keep it fairly consistent regardless of what I'm doing, just so that I can go to bed, you know, um, and fall asleep. But yeah, time management is huge. Um, so I put a lot of emphasis on that um, and prioritizing at different times, right? Like you, I can't prioritize 
my workouts year round, um, depending on what's happening. So for instance, today, let's, I mean, my priorities mm. in life are families first. Um, so today after we hang up, um, I am running to the gym to, to get a lifting session in. And then I'm grabbing both of my kids and we are headed east of the mountains to go fishing um, for the weekend. And it was a, a tradition I started when my daughter was three years old uh, and we did more playing with Barbies in the tent than fishing at that point, but uh, <laughs> super cool. And then a couple of my buddies joined me when they had kids. So it was a dad and kids, um, no wives allowed. And uh it was kind of fun and and we did that for 15 years until she went off to college and she's been out of the house for eight years and like i said she just moved back home for six months while her fiance is deployed so we were like hey let's fire this trip back up and make it a tradition again um so really excited about it. We're going to do some fishing and some barbecuing and, you know, uh, I will get some fitness in, uh, again, prioritizing that. So when I get over there today, we'll get set up and then I'm going to go for like a four mile run in the desert and then hit the lake and do a two mile swim. And then I'm taking the weekend off to just focus on the kids and having some fun. Nice. And so what, uh, what kind of fishing will you be doing? We'll just be trout fishing super simple lake lake yeah. trout fishing yeah and yeah float exactly. tubes or or off the uh, lake or what do you do i've got a john boat so we'll just be okay. out in the john boat i i used to love to duck hunt and i still do i just uh have kind of gotten away from that as my dog's gotten older and you know my son has gotten older we used to duck hunt all the time um you know pretty good duck hunting out here in what, the what are your primary ducks that you that you see we're, we're usually going for green heads for uh -huh. mallards. Yeah. And do you have pintails or what else do you have out there? We do. We do. Um, we have pintails. They're not as, as prevalent. Uh, widgeon. We have a ton of widgeon. Um, you know, we'll get some wood ducks. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty much green head guys. Yeah. Well, obviously that's the most exciting one, I think. And we have, we're in the Southern Flyway, uh, in Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, that, that area, Arkansas. And we've had some really incredible duck hunts in, in Arkansas, but this year I'm taking my, my dad, he's, um, he's 84. And so he loves duck hunting. I mean, loves it. Like that's his primary uh, outdoor recreation, but as he's gotten older and older, you know, the waders and, and, and walking through a swamp is eh, maybe not the best. So I've been really searching for where we could duck hunt, um, where he could, where he can do it. And I'm going to a dry field in, um, in Saskatchewan and, uh, we're going to, we're, or maybe it's, I don't know. It's in Canada. Uh, I think it's right on the border of, of Saskatchewan. And uh, we're going to do that this fall. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to cut into the elk hunting a little bit, but I'm really looking forward to taking my dad up there. And he's going to be able to to just step right out of the vehicle. And and those the, yeah. the greenheads come in with the pintails, and they are just swarming on those dry fields up there. It's a, I've never seen anything like it. Because all the duck hunting that, that I've ever done is like flooded timber, uh, swampy kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's my favorite is the flooded timber. But just like what you guys are doing, probably the most epic duck hunt I've ever had is in a cornfield, just really? out of ground blinds, unreal. Just yeah, hundreds and hundreds, of, and they don't come in till ten o'clock, so you get to sleep in a little bit, go have huh. breakfast, and, and then imagine go that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is not but, that is not the duck hunting I'm used to. It's usually get it up and 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 be be there when everyone else is coming in from their, their night of partying. Um, right. so, so I got, uh, we got off track a little bit, but you were telling, you were, uh, talking about family and, uh, and your fishing trip that you've got going on. And, uh, but, but there's still, a uh, quite a bit of balancing going on between your, your, your growing business and, uh, and everything else that you've got in your life. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely a business. And before we, we move on, it's just, it's really cool that you're taking your dad, um, I think back, my dad passed uh, actually right before the games in 2017, um, but he was an avid fisherman. Like I grew up fish. I didn't hunt as a, as a young man until I, I met a guy when I was like 19, when I started as an iron worker and he was an avid hunter and, and that's how I started hunting. But what, anyway, what kind of fishing dad, did your dad like to do? 
Um, we did a lot of steelhead fishing okay. in the rivers, right, in a drift boat. So mm-hmm. that was mainly what we would do, um, you know. And he was he was he was that guy that made me cast in the backyard into a coffee can until I could hit it eight out of ten times before he was taking me on the boat. He's like, I am not messing with you all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, just thinking about that and you taking your dad on this trip. Um, we took him over to the Bighorn in Montana and we did a fly fishing trip with my, my business partner over there. And this is while he was on like a heavy dose of chemo, but he was also on steroids. So we called him the fishinator because he would (laughs) not get out of the river. He literally, it was like 12 hours of just hammering fish. And we're like, dad, (laughs) how about some dinner, you know, seven o'clock at night. But anyway. But how awesome is it to see, to see your dad doing that? Like just going for it at, at, at the, an older age, you know, like that. I, I, I'm really looking forward to that for, for this. And, and on this particular trip, my boys are driving up to this place. It's going to be 10 hours from Bozeman where they are, uh, to get to, to where we're going. Um, but it'll be, it'll be three generations, you know, and that's, that's incredibly, um, incredibly valuable and rare. And to do that around the activity that, that we all love is just, something whether that's hunting or fishing it doesn't matter but in the in that sporting pursuit and having three generations there is just i I don't know it's it's time that is so valuable and so rare that um i don't know i'm really looking forward to it yeah no i i i appreciate that part of this you know this weekend um my dad started going with us oh man probably when lex was like 10 and so he was he was there for about eight years with us and you know, when, again, when he passed, one of his last requests to me was to keep his grandkids together. So, um, he's got four grandchildren. My sister has a boy and girl as well. And he was like, Hey, the one thing I want you to do is make sure and keep these grandkids together. You know, you're, you're the man now. So that's something that I'm trying to do. And so what what have you nephew? Oh, you're taking them that this is like, yeah, you're going to yeah. fire this trip up and it's going to be a grand grandchildren <laughs> yeah, trip. Uh, that's right. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. 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 yeah that's Looking awesome, man. Well, there's so many, there's so many awesome things to do. I and mean, when you get outside and, and, uh, you know, you can turn the phone off or you can get in a place where you can't, can't have the phone, uh, or there's no reception. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the best time in my opinion. Yeah. And it is funny. We do have similar paths. My son, Dom was over in Bozeman, uh, going to Montana state for a little bit yeah. and that's now where he's working can. for me. Yeah. And, uh, he's actually headed back over next week to go uh, build a new courthouse in town. So, Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, then we ought to, we ought to get our, our boys to hook up because if he likes to fish, uh, we yeah. got the, oh, yeah. we got the whole setup out there. We got the drift boat, the whole, the whole thing. They, the boys are crazy fishermen. And, uh, once we get past this, uh, this weekend of getting married, um, I'm in a situation right now that's rare and awesome of having all three of my kids home. And, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good time, you know, as they, as they get older, it, it just doesn't happen as much. So like you, I'm prioritizing the time and trying to spend as much time with them as I possibly can, uh, while they're all here. And, um, but they all have exciting things going on and, and I'm happy for that. Like you, you want to see them go, but you also, you know, value the time when they're here. For sure. For sure. But yeah, um, you know, getting back to those priorities that you were asking about, um, they, they change, you know, I mean, the big picture stuff doesn't, it's always about family. Um, and I think about that as my number one priority fitness. I think about that as my lifestyle. Like I live a very active fit lifestyle. Um, and, my iron work, that is my career, you know? So I think about it like family fitness, iron and iron is my career and then archery, you know, and I call it archery, but that's really my, my outdoors, like everything that I love to do, you know, um, I would have to say elk hunting is probably my number one favorite thing Mm -hmm. to do, but I do, I enjoy fishing, um, got some great opportunities this summer, you know, uh, trying to squeeze everything in, but, it, it's about every day prioritizing. Um, I'm in a place with my business now where I've got a lot of good people. So you ask about 
how do I manage, you know, 300 plus employees. Um, I have built a lot of really, really strong leaders over the years, right? And my goal is always to look for good people and then teach them their trade or our trade. And it depends on what they're doing. And now I've got really good people that I've taught the trade that are now teaching others. So nice. we've got quite a mentorship program going. Um, I'm mentoring a young man that's, um, he just turned 40. I'm 57. You know, my son Dominic is 21. So there's almost 20 years between us all. And that right now is, you know, what the succession plan at Apex looks like. But it's very important to have that. And, you know, you having a, a real plan that we meet on quarterly and we go through things and, and we have an agenda, um, that's, that's helped tremendously. So, you know, and, and I talk to all of my managers and I'm like, hey, you should have three to six direct reports. Right. If you have more than that, it makes it very challenging. I can't manage 350 people, but I can certainly manage my six top leaders. And that's what I do, you know, whether it's in Montana or Spokane or my CFO or my field operations manager. And so that is that's how you're able to grow right? is, is build yeah. people and uh, and manage them and give them the power to, to make decisions. Uh, so. So at this point, you you have understood the the power of of stepping back a little bit. Did you uh, it, at any point in your career? Did you? I mean, you seem you seem kind of like a lone wolf a little bit. Like you got a little bit of lone wolf in you. You, you uh, I, I do too. And that has been one of the most challenging things for me to do is to step back and allow others to um, to do their job or to lead or to purposefully step back so that someone else can can grow in, in yeah there. did you did you I have think, challenges with that um i don't know if i had challenges letting go because i wasn't doing it until i was ready or that the whoever i was training was ready you know i think about it with my tower crane manager um he started working for me as an apprentice over 15 years ago and we'd be out on the iron, hanging iron. This is when I was very involved in the field and I'm up on the iron. I was more worried about him than I was me and we were hanging a big girder and I was worried about him standing 50 feet away from me and I smashed my toe and broke my big toe. Only time I'd ever been hurt in the field. And I'm like, if I would have just been concentrating on me, but anyway, took him from there. Then we when we started the tower crane company, he came with me and we were in the air and we worked together. I worked every weekend on cranes because when you're putting up and taking down tower cranes in metropolitan cities, we closed down a lot of the streets, right? So most of the time we were working Saturdays and Sundays, um, putting up or climbing or taking down cranes. But Josh would be with me every day. And then eventually I handed him the radio and said, okay, it's your turn to phone. And he would take over and I was kind of in his hip pocket for probably a year. And after that, I was like, you don't even need me up here anymore. Right. So slowly transitioned out. Um, and it's kind of been that way with with all the different positions. I, I can't say there's a position in the company that I haven't spent some serious time doing, um, you know, CFO and maybe some of the project management stuff I don't get into. Um, you know, I'm more of a hands on guy, but for sure. And it's about just building good people, being a good person that people want to work for, you know, taking yeah. care of them. And which is yeah. why I started the company. I mean, it was, you know, in the late eighties, early nineties, I guess. And I was working for a guy that was a great guy, but I, when I watched him treat his employees and I'm like, you know what, these guys, I mean, I'm out there working with them side by side and thinking they can be treated better. And that was one of my my original motivators for starting Apex. Hmm. One of the one of the lessons I learned, I went and did the uh, the Seal Fit course with Mark Devine down there, and one of the big takeaways that I came back from that uh, that he really instilled in me. And you know, you you get these lessons when you're when you're ready to receive them. I think, uh, but. I came back and I wrote down some notes. And one of the things that I wrote down is in order to be an exceptional leader, you must be an exceptional follower. 
And it sounds like, you know, that's that's exactly what you did as you, you hand him the radio and then you continue to work with him, but he's in charge and you're the follower, but you're really you're really leading. You're really leading him and saying, No, you're you're in the position now. You've you've earned this. You need to keep going. And that's uh that's that was a that was a really big lesson for me. Um with that one, but man, congratulations on, on the, uh, the success of that. It sounds like it's continuing to, to, uh, grow and mature and you've got, you've got your son in the pipeline and somebody else there. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I know you're, uh, you. on a little bit of a, a, a tighter deadline this morning. You got to go fishing understood. So I want to get to a few other questions. I have, I have quite a few questions about um, CrossFit specifically, um, and, and your, your success there, but also just how, how that relates to not just someone like myself, who's an aspiring competitive athlete, but, um, just everybody, uh, that, that may not be in great shape right now. And, and I was just kind of wondering what your, what your history of CrossFit is. When did you, st when did you start doing CrossFit? So I think I worked walked into the first CrossFit gym in 2015. Uh, a neighbor of mine, she was doing it regularly, three times a week, something to that effect. And she's like, Kev, you need to come with me. You would love this stuff. And I was, you know, in obviously in the management position at this time, I was still spent a lot of time in the field, but I was just working out at a gym doing different stuff. Um, I've always been super active in some way. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, she's like, you should come with me. I said, all right. Finally, I decided to go with her on a Saturday and I really enjoyed it. But I'm like, okay, that was really fun, but I'm not ready to commit to going to classes. I just work out when I can squeeze in an hour or two hours in a day and do my thing. And so about six months later, uh, another buddy of mine started doing CrossFit at another gym. And he's like, hey, why don't you come work out with me? And he's a triathlete. Um, and I used to run with him a lot and stuff like that. So I said, all right. And that's where I started to really get into it. And then I was like, well, I should probably join this one that's a block from my house or, you know, a couple <laughs> blocks from the house. So I joined the gym and this was, this was in 2015 and end of 2015. And one of the coaches after probably a couple months, he said, Hey, have you ever thought about competing? And I'm like, like, well, I don't understand. What do you mean? I didn't even <laughs> know there was such thing as CrossFit competitions. And he said, there's a thing called the open. So he told me about the open coming up in 2016. And he's like, I think you should try it. I think you do really well. At this time I was 49. So I was in the end of the age group competing yeah. against, you know, some of the OGs like the Grundler brothers and what have you, you know? And I, uh, I said, all right. And he said, by the way, can you please get some CrossFit shoes? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Matt Frazier's yeah. story. Sounds like too. <laughs> the same thing happened to him. Yeah. So, um, that was, that was the end of 2015. I decided to do it. I did the open and I think I was like 49th in the world. Um, but I was the oldest, you know, in the mm -hmm. age group, one of the oldest in the age group. And he's like, okay, I crunched your numbers. Had you been in the fifties, you would have won. Right. Wow. And I said, I said, okay, well, I'm going to put some focus on it. So I was turning 50 the next year and I set a goal for myself to, to make it to the CrossFit games. That was my goal. I'm like, all right, I'm turning 50. I age up into that bracket. My goal is to make it to the games. And I put my head down, but all I was doing was classes and I would say RX plus, you know, I would do the classes. I would always make them harder. I would maybe stay and do a few things, but I did classes all the way through the open, all the way through the qualifiers, which was just one round at that time and qualified for the games in first place at when I did the qualifiers. So at that time, my coach, Mike, he was like, Hey, I want to, I want to program for you for the next three months headed into the games and let's, let's see what we can do. And at that time, I, to be honest, I changed my mindset from, I want to make it to the games to, okay, I want to go win the games. Like I know I can do it now. I just beat everybody in my age group. So my mindset changed and I trained for three months. I was not a good CrossFitter. I was... <laughs> 
uh, I, I was fit. Um, I was fairly strong, not really strong. I was a good gymnast, but I had the mental capacity to push myself harder than anybody else was going to push themselves. And I had had some um, God given athletic genes, you know, so it's like, all right, let's take what I have and let's go win this thing. So I went after it and it was, it was, it was awesome. So I went in 2017 and that's when I, I won the first uh, CrossFit games. So, nice. That's awesome, yeah. man. That that's, that's an incredible story. Um, so many questions. So then, then you go back and you don't go back the following year to do it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I kind of, in my mind, I had, a, I had, um, conquered my goal, you know? And so I was like, okay, I, I did it. I did what I was going to do and I'm moving on with life. And yeah. so in 2018, I just went about living life. And to be honest, going into 2019, my wife and I were at a charity function for a children's hospital and we were just talking and I'm like what's my what is my purpose now right at 50 I'm like my business is up and rolling I've got great people running all the different divisions my children are grown up pretty much out of the house at this point or very close um, and I had accomplished my goal at the games I'm like you know what is it and I I thought about you know, what are, what are my purpose? What is my purpose? And it was to inspire and for me to be able to inspire people to do whatever, to live a, a healthier lifestyle, to get more out of themselves, push themselves harder. Right. Um, I felt like CrossFit was a good platform to do that, um, to mentor, which is when yeah. I started taking some young people and mentoring them and saying, Hey, if there's some people that I think have these, these qualities that I look for in leaders, can I start to mentor and can I give back, right? So those were my three things and how do I give back, right? Whether it's financially through charities or time or however, right? There's lots of different ways to do that. Um, so moving forward, I decided to go back to the games in 2019 and see if I couldn't win again, right? Of course, this was my goal at that time. Um, I went down to San Diego. My daughter was going to school down there and I worked out at Invictus San Diego. Yeah. And that's where I, I met the team from Invictus and I was very impressed. And so at that time I decided, okay, I need to become a better CrossFitter if I'm going to do this, right? I, I can't, I'm going to be three years into the age group. I need to be better. Um, so I started following the Invictus master's programming and that took me to the next level and made me a better CrossFitter. What do you think your your uh, your your uh, holes in your in your game were? Where where were you weak as a CrossFitter? That was it. I was just weak. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I am too. <laughs> when I say that, it's it's all relative, right? I'm I'm not a huge athlete. And how, how big are uh, you? Uh, five eight one seventy. Okay, we're right. I, I've got about maybe six, seven pounds on you, right around the same. And uh, then, like, what are your what are your numbers, or what what were your numbers back then for like snatch and well, clean and jerk and just the strength back, movements? Back then, I didn't, I didn't even know what my one rep max back squat was. <laughs> so it's like thinking about three hundred pounds in a back squat. I'm like, no chance, right? And I mean, I I was able to do it shortly after that you know today i back squat 375 plus um you know um deadlifts are 465 something like that you know i'll train at 400 um so it was just the strength things like i was always mm -hmm. when i would go and it was just the strength movements i usually ended up um in the bottom half Right. Okay. So yeah. out of 20 competitors, I'd be 12th, something like that. So, mm -hmm. so my goal when I went back in 21, now I knew what I needed to do was to place in the, in the top half on the strength movements. So okay. that was, that was definitely, definitely it just cause I hadn't lifted like that. Like when I was coming up through school, I benched, Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, everybody yeah. loves to bench. Right. 
Right. <laughs> and so uh, I, I just heard on, on Elk Shape, one of the other things that uh, really, really caught my ear there was that you have a wrestling background. Uh, what what was your wrestling background? Uh, so in in high school, I was a wrestler, you know, state podium finisher uh -huh. um, pretty much every year. And I was going to thought about wrestling and playing football in college over at Washington State, had some scholarship offers at some smaller schools. Um, but when it was all said and done, uh, I knew school wasn't for me. And that's when I got into the trades um, and became an iron worker at 19 years old. So do you think um, uh, the ability to push yourself further than most people would uh, comes from wrestling? For sure. And, you know, I was fortunate. I grew up, my best buddy was an absolute animal, went from wrestling and he, he actually ended up wrestling in college and then going into the MMA when it was oh, really nice. new, you know. Um, but we used to compete every day, every single day we would go head to head and he was a t tough SOB. Yeah. <laughs> right. So still is. Um, but, you know, I had... 10 years ago and toe to toe with this guy every day. So, yeah. and it well, didn't that, matter that'll what do we it. were doing. That'll yeah. do it. That'll, that'll yeah. uh, create the mental capacity to handle about anything. I also have a wrestling background and, and that really caught my eye. And that's one of the things that I enjoy so much about CrossFit is because got away from wrestling and then it's like I tried marathons and different things like that, but nothing was really nothing was really getting it for me. Like, like there was this, there was this, this missing element in my life. And I, I entered my first fishing tournament and these type of fishing tournaments are a lot of horsepower. There's a boat race in the beginning and then, you, you know, you're racing to the spot to get there. And so there's a lot of adrenaline and there's a lot of, and, and, and then you're, you're fishing, uh, competitively and it doesn't sound like the same as wrestling, but I got kind of the same feeling as before a wrestling match or before, you know, a wrestling tournament. And I'm like, you know, I really like this. This has been yeah. missing from my life. And so that was one of the things that got me into doing a whole bunch of fishing tournaments. But then even as I kind of transitioned out of the fishing tournaments, like, okay, well, what's now? Is it marathons? And there's a little bit of, there's a, some butterflies and stuff with a marathon and stuff. But it wasn't until I really started CrossFit that I, um, I really kind of felt the same as a wrestling workout. Like, this is what I've been missing. This, yeah, this type of you. training. Yes. And it's very, very individual, uh, very technique focused. There's a million things that you can focus on. You know, there's, you, you can always find a weakness and you can always work on that weakness. You can spend too much time working on your strength and then, uh, then you have these holes in your game. Uh, but I, I, I just kind of, I wanted to ask you about that because I kind of, I kind of, thought maybe that might be the case that you had a, a wrestling background. And then when I heard it on, uh, on elk shape, uh, that was something I wanted to talk about. And then when I see a lot of my, uh, customers and clients and fishermen and people that I hunt with, if you ask them and they're really into it, a lot of them have wrestling in their background and I don't know, wrestlers are pretty mentally strong. Um, yeah. so going back to the, that CrossFit story, you win the second time that you go to the games. Yeah, in 19, I did end up winning again. Okay, and then you take another year off. I did. Yeah, that was the pandemic year, oh. so I don't know if I would have for sure. I, th I think I would have, um, and I went and did Wadapalooza. It was right before, I think it was February of 2020, you know, mm -hmm. and then the, especially in our state, you know, it locked down here. So um, 2020 took the year off, and then heading into 21 decided it would be really cool to go back and and win at the top of my age group right so now yeah. i'm 50, 54 and you know almost 55 going into the it to the games um for my third third round so and wow. i you know it was a challenge i'm always looking for a different challenge um to be 100% honest, like you said, I aged up last year, and that's why I didn't do it. I wasn't interested in doing jumping pull-ups and lighter weights. I, you know, <laughs> I wanted the challenge, and I wanted, I want the hardest movements possible. And I want things that nobody else is going to want to try or do. You know, I'm always looking to 
to challenge myself and continue to keep my athleticism. You know, I think it's so important as we age, use it or lose it, it's for real. Like you yes. have, you got to move, right? Yes. You've got to move. I want to be able to jump up on a log and run across it with my bow on my back and my heavy backpack and not think twice about, oh man, am I going to fall off here? Right? Like you got to keep your balance and doing things outside of the gym for me, mountain biking, snowboarding, doing very athletic things uh, are huge, you know? Um, that's awesome. That's a great transition to, uh, to how I'd like to, to finish this up. And that is in order to do those things, what, what do you feel like you have to do as you continue to age and, and what are the things that you put the most priority on to be able to continue to elk hunt like you want to, to be able to continue to be outside, to hike, to fish, to, to do snowboard and mountain bike and all the things that you, that you love to do. What are the things at, as you age, they may, these things may be different than they were when you were, when you were 30. Right. But as you're in your 55, 56, 57, moving into your 70s, moving into your 80s, what are the things that you think that we need to do to uh, continue to be able to do the things that we love, like being outside? You know, I, I preach it right now, and that is mobility is probably the number one thing. Obviously, it, it's a holistic approach to good sleep, good diet. Um, you know, lots of hydration, um, some good supplements, you know, really basic supplements. Um, but I would have to say mobility is the number one thing that keeps me moving. And, and I, I've talked about an example where I went to Big Sky, Montana, and we built the chair barn up at the top of Ram Charger. And this was in 2018. And uh, I was up on the iron with my partner Josh just for something fun and we went up and we were hanging iron and I was fine I was moving fine I went back in 2020 21 I think it was the spring of 21 and I was up connecting with my son because he had gotten into the trade this at this point he was going to school and working just uh, depending where he was at and I moved better in 2021 than I did in 2018. And it was all because I could get to points easier. I could climb up the iron. I could hang over. I could do whatever I needed to do because my body was more flexible. So 100%. Yeah. It's so how, how much time are you doing mobility? How much time are you putting into it? Every day. Every day. I, I, I get in some mobility. Uh, I happen to follow um, the program pliability uh, hmm. it was the old rom wad okay and i do that every day um, and i just follow their program and then i usually do a couple other things based on what i need for the day or what but you know what i'm feeling mm -hmm. uh, but yeah every every day i do that i've had a similar similar experience man i i ran into uh um Joe Hippensteel's work and he uh oh, yeah. he's down in san diego and he he uh has helped me so much and I do his program every single day, every single day. And you know, it might have not even be so important of which program you do. It's more of, is there a program that you are doing every single day? And that might be more important than which program you're doing, you know, every now and then, you know, in my 100%. opinion, but for me anyway, because I used to just kind of get on uh, Amazon or something like that and look, and there's tons of free yoga classes up there and all kinds of stuff. And you do one and you're like, Oh, maybe that was okay. And then the next day you get a really challenging one and it's really good. And then the next day it's something else. But until I found Joe Hippensteel's program, I didn't know what I was there weren't any goals to it. And so what I found with Joe's is like, there's a standard for every single movement. Like you should be able to cross your legs and put your head on the floor. And if you can't cross your legs and put your head on the floor, then that's what you need to be working towards. And that's your standard. And every one of his positions has a standard. And that's been so helpful to me to just to just to have a guideline. It's kind of like CrossFit. Like it's kind of like doing back squats or something. It's like, okay, back squats are important, but how much should I be able to do? What is a good back squat? What is a good back squat per my body weight? And if you have those guidelines, then you're, you'll are you probably get there. But if you're just like, oh, well, I'll just do three back squats. Okay, well, that 
and then in two weeks I'll do three more. You're probably not going to make much progress towards any goal. But um, yeah, yeah I, I agree uh, with the with the mobility, and I've I've spent more and more and more time. I keep getting up earlier and earlier. I used to get up at five. Now I get up at four thirty so that I can get my my work my 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 warm up in and my, my stretching and my mobility work in before the workout and all of the injuries that I was having, the nagging little, little injuries have, have vanished and I don't have those anymore. And I feel like I'm making a lot more progress. All right. So, you. um, thank you. Um, so w- with all of your experience of, of not doing CrossFit and then doing CrossFit and making, making it to the games and changing your program and, winning three times. I'd like to ask you these, these questions. So there's a lot of people out there that are, that are approaching their 40th birthday or approaching their 50th birthday and they're, and, and they're looking at their life and they're looking at themselves and going, man, I don't know how I ended up being 60 pounds overweight and I haven't done anything in a while. By the time I turn 50, I want to be able to do X or I want to, you know, lose 50 pounds or I want to do something. So for somebody like in in that, what kind of advice could you give them for mindset, for uh, uh, execution plan for what they're what they're doing? And it doesn't I mean, I'm not talking about like you got to do X, Y and Z, just like what should what what is a helpful way of of encouraging that person you know it's unfortunately it's about consistency well, not unfortunately there but it's the individual has to want it and, and i've talked to many members in our gym um, about the fact you know hey what are you doing here what are you and i'm like there's really no secret it's not about the supplements I take. It's not about, you know, the sleep, the food. It's about everything that I do. It's a lifestyle. But when it's all said and done, you have to be consistent, right? Mm -hmm. They have, you've got to be, do it every day, every day, because everyone, how many people do you see that lose 20, 30 pounds and they're, you're like, wow, you look amazing. Good job. You know, and they really focus. And then the next time you see them, they've put it all back on. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's about a lifestyle. Yeah. You have to decide yourself, not for somebody else. You have to decide yourself that I am ready to change my life. And am I committed to this? Mm-hmm. Right. Commitment is a huge thing. When I train for the games, I'm at a whole nother level than the years that I'm taking off. Don't get me wrong. I'm still doing fitness every day and living the lifestyle that I live. But like today, I'm headed to the gym so I can get a clean workout in. Right? right. I know what I'm doing this afternoon, but it is, it becomes a commitment. So I would say it's, it's about consistency and committing to your goal. Okay. Awesome. And then you got the, you got that person that has committed to it. Now they're, now they're doing some CrossFit like you were. Their coach says, Hey, you're, you're pretty good at this. Maybe you ought to consider a competition. So how do you make the jump from, that situation to being more of a competitive athlete is there something that you should hone in on two things i would i would follow a program right um there are a lot of really really smart people in the industry and there's some great programs out there um personally uh, i'm an invictus athlete and i follow invictus masters but having a program that works you through it like you know you're working at 75 percent doing this workout this week next week you're going to do the same workout but it's going to be at 77 percent right that's how you make gains um so i i definitely would say following a program um other than that i was talking to one of our coaches at the gym last night and it's about your mental capacity there's a difference between what i'll call the the member population and they're there they want to get their workouts they're doing their things but they're not thinking about transitions between their movements they're not thinking about movement efficiencies when you decide you want to compete i think about everything in that workout and i think about Oh, let's say we do a lot of workouts where it's like you have three minutes. So a three mom basically, and you'll do five rounds of that three minutes to do these three movements. And maybe it takes me two minutes on the first round. 
then my next goal, how do I beat two minutes on the next round and not work any harder? Mm -hmm. How do I become more efficient? So when it's all said and done, um, there's definitely a, a change in the mindset Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that, and we may cover some of this again, but then you have another jump of becoming a competitive athlete. And then now it's like, okay, I think I have a shot at the games. How do you go from, from being somebody that's in the open and you're happy to be in the top 200, top, top 400 in the world. And now you're going to try to make the games, which is going to mean that you're going to be in the top 10 in the world or the top 15, or maybe some years it might be the top 25. I don't know, but there's going to be a significant jump as I see from somebody that is a really good CrossFitter to somebody that makes the games. Is there, is there something that you would change uh, for that person or to, to uh, encourage them to, to focus on? You know, at, at that point, I think you have to be willing to train like you're going to compete. And that's very difficult, right? Because it hurts. Yes. It hurts worse than going to a class. It hurts worse than um, the consistency part. Like you need to get in, you need to train. And I'm not saying every day, but you need to have that mindset like, okay, uh, for instance, yesterday I was doing a workout with uh, 100 pound D ball pickups, throw over four foot boxes, jump over the box, burpee, you know, and it was just 50 for time. So it's just a grunt workout. Um, so in my mind, I'm like, okay, do the first 10, look at the clock, see where I'm at, and stay on that pace or beat that pace for the rest of the pro. And it it was sickening, <laughs> but you know, you have to you have to be willing to do that. You know, yeah. you got to be willing, willing to push yourself every day. Obviously having good partners when training is, is good, but you know, I can do the same thing with or without a partner, to be honest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so there's a final jump. The final jump is you're that competitive athlete. You feel like you got a shot at the games, you make the games. What's the difference between somebody that, uh, makes the games. And then, and even when you look at the masters, there's like a level right at the top top one or two then there's another level that's like the the three four five guys and then there's another level down here of the the seven eight nine guys what what's the difference between you who wins and the guy that's just happy to be at the games just that they're happy to be at the games i'm not i'm not happy unless i win um and to be honest, that is a 100% mindset thing where you say, I will do whatever I need to do on the floor to win or to do what I need to do in this workout. And it's 100% mindset. And that's why I say you've trained your body, you've taken care of your body, you slept, you eat right, you take your supplements, you work out, you train, then you train harder, then you get to the, the efficiency part and you've done all this. But there's that another level where in your head, you're like, I will not be beat. I don't care what I have to do out here and how badly it hurts. I will not be beat. And you have to go in with that mindset. And I've been pretty vocal about it, to be 100% honest, in 2021, going to the games, um, talking with Bryce from Invictus. And, you know, I put it out there. I'm like, 100%, I'm going to win. That, that is my goal. I'm going to win. Right? Yeah. And so for me, um, saying it out loud is my commitment to myself that, okay, this isn't just in my head. There's no excuses. I'm not saying I'm going to win, but, but if I don't, that's okay. I, yeah, I put my best, right? There's, there is no option. There's no plan B. So uh, it's a mindset for sure. That's awesome. And then, um, then to defend, where yeah. you know a lot of people are very, and I think that's one of the most challenging things when you look at the, you look at multiple time state champions and wrestlers, or or that's there's a lot of people that win once, very few, you know. Then the pool narrows for the people that win twice, and the people that win twice, a lot of those people win three and four times, right? Because they do have something going on in their mindset that says they have a reason that they're out there to win a second time. So for you to go back and defend, you mentioned that you, you really looked at your purpose and your why and what you were doing this for. Um, 
what about that? Is there is there something else that you can add to to what it takes to defend? To me, I, and I've been thinking about that a lot this year as I head back to the games for the fourth time. Obviously, I've aged up as well, um, and I don't think it's any secret. You know, I, I won the Open and won the quarters by over 50 points. I won the semifinals by over 100 points. I don't think um, it's any secret that people are expecting me to go and win, and that puts a lot of pressure on, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't even think about it. I mean, obviously I do a little bit because I just <laughs> talked about it, but I, I let it come in. It's not, it's not a motivator for me, right? This is about what can I do this year? I plan to be in better shape than I've ever gone to the games because I know there's an expectation. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, yep, I'm, I'm going to go do this again. Right. And this time I, my goal is to absolutely dominate whether, you know, depending on what all the workouts are, you never know, right. There are some fantastic athletes in the, in this age group and I've competed against a lot of them. They all have strengths. I will not, you know, win every workout. There's guys that are a lot better at different things than I am. Overall, my goal is, is to dominate this year. And, you know, that's, that's a mindset. And I know that I'm working harder this year than I've ever worked. I will be in better shape and better CrossFitter um, than I've ever been going to the games this year. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, this, this audience will be watching you and, uh, wishing nice. you the very best. And, um, really, uh, I know you got to get on for your fishing trip. I could end up talking to you all day, uh, about so many things, business, life, family, CrossFit, fishing, hunting, archery, on and on. I hope that you'll, uh, you'll come back on the, the show after you win the games this year. We can talk about that. And, um, really, I wish you the very best. It's been a really great to uh to get to know you a little bit and connect and i look forward to doing it again so i hope you have a great fishing trip with your family that's super important and uh thanks so much for being on the show thanks for having me tom yeah man okay well maybe we can get together and, and hunt or fish one day or or train but uh anyway thank look you kevin if uh if people want to look you up and and find you where can they do that uh it's at kevin j kester on Instagram. That's pretty much the only platform that I use. Okay. Yep. Keep it simple. All right. All right, Kevin. Well, thank you very much. And I hope you have an awesome trip. Thank you. See ya. Bye.